Okay, uh, good evening, Ginger. Today, the 7th of June, we join the rest of the world to commemorate the World Food Safety Day. Uh, it's a very um, important day for us, uh, especially us who deal in uh, beverages and foods. Uh, we all know that uh, food safety is, is very, very critical. Um, and the theme for this year is safe food, better health. I know most of us probably have experienced uh, some sort of food poisoning uh, due to a poor uh, practices. For us in Jinja, uh, we produce the highest uh, quality product. Our beers go to trade when they are safe um, to drink and we've never experienced any uh, food uh, uh, contamination of nature. So we basically celebrate this day uh, to remind ourselves and to raise awareness and our commitment to driving quality in everything we do, right from the raw material intake to the final consumer. We ensure food safety uh, through proven VPO uh, practices, including policies as well, such as supplier partnering and auditing. We basically visit and partner with our suppliers to ensure that they implement all the practices that ensure uh, safety in our food and especially the raw materials that supply to us and on site we have a lot of uh, vpo practices such as uh, prp such as uh, food safety policies that we actually drive and we train our employees and all our employees actually drives quality always in everything they do so join me uh, today and we celebrate the world food safety day by commemorating it in the pub this evening celebrating World Safety Food Day and our theme is safer food, better health. Me as a, as a packaging man, I must ensure that what I send to the market of the customers is highly of high quality. So among the things that I do is want to check the quality of all my critical control points and among them I have this EBI. And on the EBI, I'm looking at the quality of the return bottles that are being sent from the bottle washer. They should 100% comply. So that before I pack in beer, my, my bottles, they are 100% clean. I have a few parameters that I always look out for. For example, I'm looking at the outside the wall. I'm looking at the neck finish. I'm looking at the chipped in neck. I'm looking at the residue liquid and I'm looking at the HF4 stick. I must ensure that all those parameters, they are fully detected, they are fully, they fully qualified, and they can, and the bottles that I, I, I sent to the feeder, they are 100% okay and they are clean. This is a filtration section of brewing. Uh, this is one of our filtration machines. It's uh, called BMF. It uses membranes which are in these modules to filter our beer. Uh, it is very important to filter the beer because uh, it removes uh, those large particles that we could be there in the beer. And then also it also uh, removes uh, microbes such that it reduces the load when the beer goes to the pasteurizer. So this is uh, one step in uh, reducing microbes that would do contaminate the product. Yes, so we also do weekly CIP of this machine uh, to ensure that the machine itself is clean before the beer reaches here. We also do weekly forming of the area uh, to make sure that this place is sterile enough. Yes. Sulfur dioxide 
is a byproduct of fermentation here in cellars and uh, it's one of our allergens and it affects our consumers, especially the asthmatic people. So if we do not control this, then we are going to affect our consumers out there. So me as an operator, I ensure that uh, I use yeast, which is of the right generation. I do proper yeast management, uh, especially in our yeast room there, to ensure that we produce the right beer. The yeast is healthy enough to be able to reduce the sulfur dioxide levels. Also, we make sure we do analysis, and in case we have UTs uh, which will give us high sulfur dioxide, we blend with those which will give us uh, which have lower sulfur dioxide, and so as to achieve uh, 2 to 10 ppm in our packaged beer. The most important aspect of food quality safety when it comes to packaging entails looking at the quality parameters of grounds. Grounds, these are the materials we use for sealing the product once it is packaged in the bottles. So the key check here is to ensure that crowns do not carry out and it carry over any taint which is from the manufacturing error, including smells like plastic, chlorophenol or metallic which can come as a result of rusting of the crowns. So, so we do the inspection to ensure that our crowns do meet these standards. Once it is accepted we go into the next step of product packaging. So we put in beer in the in our bottles as you can see and the key information for a consumer to make a right decision is to ensure that we have all the food safety requirements on, printed out on the label of our bottles. So we have here the product identification, as you can see, this is a bottle of nail special. So we have the alcohol percentage here indicated for a consumer to make a right choice. Then on the back label, we do have information pertaining the key ingredients which are used in the manufacturing of this product. We have legal information. This legal information deters someone who is underage, someone who is pregnant, and someone who is going to, to drive. You should not take this product. Then we also have a barcode for our consumers to be able to contact us. We do have a barcode and a toll-free number, which are printed out. So our consumers always have to look out for this information so that it helps them to make right decision when it comes to deciding the product that they are taking and should be of a superior quality. As quite a team, we play a big, a big role in protecting our consumers. So as a team, we, we ensure we do analysis of our inputs before production, even the product at every stage of production. In that, in that manner, we ensure they meet specifications internally, even also the legal requirements as a, as a, for the government. In that, in that aspect, the consumer is, 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 is protected from taking any, any drink without with contaminations, which, is, which, which prevents them from any healthy complications. As quite a team, we, we, are, we are very competent in our work, as we always participate uh, uh, and, uh, success, and do successfully. In Food safety is a human right. All consumers are supposed to have access to safe food. Here at Agroways, we emphasize food safety by looking at the entire value chain. We look at food safety right from the farm, up to Agroways, up to our main offtake and our growers. We train our farmers to be cautious of handling the cereals and grains that they deliver to us to ensure food safety. We train the transporters, we train the aggregators who have storage facilities, and we train all those people who at one point or the other handle grains and cereals that come to us. So, ensuring safety of food for better health is a collective effort for all actors along the value chain. Here at Agrowage, we load a lot of emphasis on aflatoxin testing and the detection because it is very rampant in all our foods. Aflatoxin comes in at the time of harvest, at the time of storage, and at all levels of post-harvest handling. So we pay a lot of attention to testing and detection of aflatoxin in the products that we send to uh, the main user like brands.
back from our farm as they have just reached right now. Now the place we are some we are bring back sampling. Now we have we are provided our farmers with the seeds. Now that seed we are we are, we are provided for our farmers to avoid any contamination for them. So after that, we, after ascertaining that all the, the, the samples we received is passing, we write what we call the, the sample analysis report, and then we, we, are, we allow the truck to be offloaded. This is the offloading hopper. Grain from quality lab proceeds to the point of offloading. Now while here, we want to make sure that no grain that does not conform proceeds to the silo. So we do what they call back-to-back -back sampling, such that any grain that is not fit to proceed to the silo for storage or for cleaning is eliminated at this stage. That's why these people, when they are offloading this sampler, does back-to-back -to, -back to remove anything that seems not fit for use. Okay, behind me uh -huh. uh, is one of the big silos where we store grains. They, they, are, they, are, they are first dried at the dryer, then stored in one of the big silos we are seeing here. So after, after, after drying the grain, we make sure that the, the, the grain is cleaned and uh, uh, dried very well. Then you, uh, that's when you can store the grains in the big silos. So when, when we are doing the degermination or milling, we convey grains from the big silos we are seeing here into the rejamming plant. At the rejamming plant, we have uh, several equipment uh, which work in the, in, the, in the interrelated way. We have the distoner, we have the, the conditioning beams, and we have the rejammer. At the uh, distoner level, we remove the stones that might be in the grain. Okay? After, after removing the stones, the grains are conveyed into the conditioning beams. Conditioning beans is where water is added into the grain. That grain is already clean, free from stone and free from ferrous material. Uh, from uh, conditioning bean, you store that those grains for a period of six hours to make sure the uh, tampering is done sufficiently. Tampering means that uh, water has penetrated into the inside of the grain. It is stored there. It is stored there for six hours to make sure that water is uniformly uh, in the grain. Then from there, you convey the grains into uh, second conditioning section. Second condition, uh, conditioning section is to make sure the outer coating of the grain is moist. Okay? There you don't store the grains for a very long time. You just store for a short while. It's like passing uh, into the dijama. Then at the dijama level, that's where you are we do the lead degermination. The germination process involves uh, removing the outer coating of the grain and uh, also making sure that the germ from the grain is removed. Basically, the, the raw material uh, for, uh, the, or the maize grit that is uh, uh, obtained from the dijama has to be uh, free from fat. 0.7% uh, and below. 
So we have to make sure uh, the germination and removal of germ is done sufficiently. Then from there, the grits that now has been produced by the dijama are conveyed to the storage silos. The storage silos, you can either dispatch coarse grit as it is to NBL or you do further milling as requested by uh, the clan, which is uh, the, the NBL now. Okay? So we, it depends on how uh, the order is. If the order for the fine grits is more, we, do, we continue doing further milling. If the, the, uh, the, the demand for uh, the cost grid is more, we stop at the cost grid level. So that's how uh, we involved in the processing of the grain.